Well, that, let's talk about coping. You talked about survival as well and thriving. Now, the irony here is that Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships, that ostensibly led to the start of the Trojan War, makes through the 10 years of slaughter very well with all that um, beautiful exotic eastern gold. And then afterwards she manages to go back to her husband that she left and lives happily ever after. So um, this is one you know, very, very capable woman. But also your character manages to have other children. And now, so what does that tell us about the ability of people to survive? Is that true to real life, do you think? Um, and what, you know, this is a snapshot in time, a horrific snapshot in time for these women. But humans somehow manage, despite the horror, to survive. H how do you deal with that in terms of the play? And, and uh, you know, does that factor into the, the, the process at all as you look at I think it's a, it's, an, it's a theme in the play, which the end of the play is we walk on. So we walk on. All right. And, and the, sh the future waits. I, I think the nature of that survival is something else. Hmm. You know, yeah. when Andromache goes to live in the house of the man who murdered her husband and sleep in his son's bed with his son, that's her future, which was the first horror that she faces. She, she refuses to allow Hector Shield to come with her because that's the memory of her former life. I think we compartmentalize to help us to endure. We put it in the back of our head or we say that was then. Uh, the only alternative is to die. So if you're going to go on, you find a way to go on. We look for help, we look for comfort, we look for friends, family. We look for something to make tomorrow um, attractive or e endurable perhaps. So I don't know the nature of their survival. They did go on. They did have children. That was part of living. You know, unless you hold your breath and die or you kill yourself. It's the same theory in Chekhov, you know, with the three sisters. We will endure. You endure. But certain things become very important. Not having Hector Shield come mm. after your child is killed, that the mm -hmm. child be given burial. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how, I mean, those things, I know they're important, but they seem to be uh, details to the horror of the main thrust, you know? There, well, of course, burial was extremely important. I mean, you know, the story the of Antigone, yeah. the Greeks, to bury your dead was a huge thing. To not allow that was sacrilege. So to have your child being eaten by dogs or, or birds was, they would not be guaranteed an afterlife or they would, you know, there were all sorts of, of um, uh, religious beliefs about it. You so know, it's we worse tend to, than barbaric. It's worse than barbaric, not to allow you to bury your dead. Um, and uh, you attach it to any other, if you are uh, 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 orthodox in your religion, it's the same. If something is not allowed to you, a right, um, uh, it's considered barbaric. So the Greek audience would have really, being Greek, sympathized with the heroes from the outset, and yet they find their own heroes acting much worse than the barbaric Yes. Foreigners. Yes. And we, we're seeing that in the world today. We have certain rules for ourselves in our, in our civil world, but we allow certain things to happen when we're at war or when we have prisoners of war. Um, there are lots of different standards. And, and Euripides is saying we are all human beings. Do we allow this to happen to our fellow human beings? So he's not, I mean, these are about war heroes. I mean, the all, this is, you know, this is, in a sense, it has, it is an, an anti-war play because it shows the consequences, because everybody suffers. But they're all war heroes, you know. My husband, Hector, was a hero. He was a warrior. This is not a pacifist society. Right. But when you look at the consequences of war, then you question whether they should happen at all. Now, in this war setting, though, Yana, you're, the scene that the trial, the almost mock trial that happens there mm -hmm. with, with Helen, has almost a comic tone to it. I mean, she's, she's very resourceful. So she's able to kind of, you know, handle things pretty well. Um, she manages to make through at the, at the end. But at that moment, you're saying you feel that, well, you could potentially be killed right away. So you yeah, feel I mean, like a I, victim. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, obviously I, I don't think Helen is, is thinking of it as a, a pretend trial. She, her understanding is that her husband has come here to take her away to kill her. Right. Or to have the Greeks kill her. And so 
uh, it's, a, it's a tricky scene because, she, you know, she is fighting for her life, but the weight, the tremendous weight of the play is kind of against her at that point. So we have had, uh, people have called it sort of the comic relief in the scene, which is a bit thing mm -hmm. that I sort of struggle with a little bit. But I guess I just resolve it for myself is, you know, is that I'm, I'm in a trial with all these people who are against me. It's a mock trial in that it's not, it's not fair. It's not, um, it's not balanced. There's not a jury of, you know, impartial peers. Yet she handles it. She handles <laughs> yeah. it yeah. really she, well. And, well she's, and, and she's, you know, the lone Greek woman in mm -hmm. a way, right? Mm -hmm. She gets to go back to Greece and live with the, you know, in, in princely fashion. So is it the message in part that, you know, there's a set of laws for the foreigners and another one for the, the really capable Greeks? Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the message. I mean, I, I guess I'm still sort of wrestling with the play because I wrestle with the women. The, what, what is Euripides saying about those women who, who talk about Helen with such um, hatred? Hatred, <laughs> you know, because uh, I mean, just some of the things that are said about her by them and they seem to com almost completely absolve the men. Right. And put all the focus of their hatred and their blame on Helen. Because they think Helen should have known better. I think as a woman, yeah. they go, men are fighting, they're going to fight, right. but you should have known better. And you should have left, and you should have stood up. As a woman, should've, you should have said, don't kill these children, don't enslave these women. Mm -hmm. You And also, I do believe in a way, it is a mock trial, because Menelaus is in her hands. Is, is, is he adores her, and you know it from the minute he comes there. He could have not come to see her. He could have just put her on the ship. He could have had her executed without seeing her. He wants to see her again. And, and the fact that she comes down from the sh sh ships or whatever, totally beautiful, probably more beautiful than she has ever been in her life. Mm -hmm. And there are all these women starving in rags. I find it totally understandable. Yes, but I'm sure she was doing all she could under the circumstances. Well, I know, she only had a little we... bit of rouge in the corner there, so you know. So you can see that these are two deeply invested individuals in this play, which opens on Friday. Do you have a preview before then? Yeah? Tonight. 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 Yeah. I hope that goes really, really well. <laughs> Yana, Shauna, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you. break many legs. Thank you. Thank and you. On the opening night. Thank you for joining us too. Next week, we come back at the same time. We're going to be meeting with the director of the Lopa de Vega play, Fuente Ovauna. Lawrence Boswell is going to be joining us, and we're also going to have uh, some time with his uh, composer. And we'll be talking about that wonderful process that we're going through as the festival presents its first ever play from Spain and from the Spanish Golden Age. Thank you for joining us. Please, there's uh, a lot of place to see. Come visit us, and thank you. Bye-bye.